And who are you, the proud lord said, that I must bow so low? Thus goes the infamous song, the reigns of Castamir. But why did the Red Lion of the Westerlands rise up in rebellion against his overlords? How did his conniving sister set the stage for this rivalry? And what drove Tywin Lannister to annihilate two entire houses? This is the history of the Rain Tarbeck Revolt. During the 3rd century AC, Casterly Rock was ruled by Lord Gerald Lannister, known as Gerald the Golden, a powerful and learned man, respected by his vassals, who showed their support by liking his videos and subscribing to his channel. And if you want to do the same for Fantasy Haven, go right ahead. We do animated lore, we do live streams, we do video games, and there's even some bonus content on our Patreon. Thanks to this person for suggesting this video in the comments. If you have any ideas for future videos, let me know in the comments below. Now, let's return to Westeros. The most powerful vassals of the Golden Lions were the Crimson Ones, House Reign of Castamir, who, like their liege lords, had built up their wealth from gold and silver mines. Marriage between the two houses was inevitable. Lord Gerald Lannister had four children, including the twins Tywald and Tion, and their little brother Titus. Lord Robert Rain had three children, Roger, Ellen, and Reynard. Lord Robert betrothed his ambitious daughter Ellen to Sir Tywald, the heir to Casterly Rock. The houses lived in harmony, but Westeros is rarely a peaceful place. In 233 AC, House Peak revolted against King Maekar Targaryen. The Peak Uprising culminated in the deadly storming of Starpike. King Maekar was crushed, Lord Robert was slain, and Sir Tywald Lannister died in his brother's arms. Ellen Rain's ambitions did not die with her father or her husband. While her brother Roger became Lord of Castamere, she craved to be the Lady of Casterly Rock. Tion Lannister, the new heir, was betrothed to a daughter of Lord Rowan, but the fiery Ellen Rain convinced him to break this betrothal and take her instead. The ailing Lord Gerald was unsettled by how quickly Ellen acted, but eventually allowed the match, and they married two years after Tywald's death. During the same wedding ceremony, Tion's younger brother Titos married the beautiful Lady Jane Marbrand. Lord Gerald was an ailing man, refusing to marry and struggling to rule. As such, Ellen Rain became the Lady of Casterly Rock in all but name, hosting grand balls and tournaments, stuffing the court with musicians, artists and mummers, and empowering House Rain with lands and titles. A rivalry soon sparked between her and her sister-in-law, Jane Marbrand. Conflict returned to Westeros just a year later. The invasion met its end at the Battle of Wendwater Bridge, and the rebellion was crushed, but Tion Lannister was slain. Ellen became widowed once again, and her family reluctantly returned to Castamere, although she was allowed to remain at the Rock. Less than 200 years prior, Queen Alysanne Targaryen had implemented the Widow's Law, which prevented widows from being thrown out of their late husband's castles. However, her power and influence wilted like a dying flower. The weak-willed Titus Lannister was now the heir, and his wife Jane was seen as the new Lady of the Rock. In one last act of desperation, Ellen Rain tried to seduce Titus to break up the marriage or perhaps secure a powerful position as his mistress, but the meek young man was too intimidated by this headstrong woman to get it up. He confessed the failed seduction to Lady Jane, who immediately passed it on to Gerald. The old lord hastily married Ellen Rain to the twice-widowed, middle-aged Lord Walderon of Tarbeck Hall from the declining House of Tarbeck. As spoken by Lord Toad, the fool of Casterly Rock, the rivalry between Ellen and Jane transformed into a war, the War of the Wombs. Jane Marbrand provided her husband with five children, including the intense Tywin Lannister. Ellen Rain provided Waldron with three children, each deliberately named as daggers aimed at Lord Gerald's heart. Rohan was named after Rohan Webber, Lord Gerald's widow. Cyrell was named after Sorel Lannister, the niece Gerald was rumoured to have murdered. And Theon was, of course, named after Gerald's second son and Ellen's second late husband. In the year 244 AC, Gerald Lannister died of a bad bladder, and the ineffectual Titus became Lord of Casterly Rock. The Laughing Lion was aptly named. When his vassals mocked him at court, he laughed. When they refused to pay their debts, he laughed. When they openly defied him, he laughed, and showered them with lands and gifts. House Lannister's power began to crumble. Many merchants and nobles borrowed from Titus, including Roger Rain, the Red Lion of Castamere. He gave some of the Lannister gold to his sister, who started rebuilding the crumbling Tarbeck Hall. In 252, Walder Frey sensed Titus Lannister's weakness and pushed a betrothal onto him. He ceded, and his daughter Jenna Lannister married Walder's second son, Emmon Frey. During the betrothal announcement, Tywin protested, Lord Roger Rain expressed his fury, and Ellen Rain merely laughed at the absurdity. Two years later, Jane Marbrand died. Titus was truly alone. The year was 260. 
The War of the Nine Penny Kings saw many Westerosi nobles proving their mettle in the Stepstones, including Tywin Lannister and two of his brothers, Kevin and Tyget. When they returned to Casterly Rock, fresh from battle, Tywin was determined to restore his family's glory, without his father's permission. Tywin demanded that the Lords of the Westerlands repay his father's loans or else send hostages to Casterly Rock, while Kevin formed a company of 500 veterans to aid his brother in this endeavour. When Lord Roger Rain received the demands, he merely laughed and advised his friends to ignore them. Lord Tarbeck himself was outraged, riding directly to Casterly Rock to confront Lord Titos, where he was captured and imprisoned by Tywin. Ellen Rain responded swiftly. She herself imprisoned three gold lions, two Lannisters of Lannisport and Stafford Lannister, Tywin's cousin and the brother of his betrothed, Lady Joanna Lannister. Ellen threatened to harm all three unless Lord Tarbeck was returned safely. Tywin argued that she be sent three separate pieces of her husband, but his father balked, returned Waldron unharmed, and forgave all Tarbeck debts. Tywin had had enough. All his life he had watched men mock and insult his father, spitting on the Lannister name without repercussions. And now, the Reigns and Tarbecks had openly defied him. Less than a year later, Tywin triggered his plan. Without consulting his father, he sent ravens to Castamere and Tarbeck Hall, summoning them to Casterly Rock to face justice for their crimes. Lord Roger Rain and Lord Waldron Tarbeck finally renounced their fealty to the toothless lion and his upstart heir, rising up in rebellion. Perhaps Lord Rain thought he could seize the Lord Paramountcy of the Westerlands, and perhaps his sister Ellen thought she could finally become Lady of Casterly Rock. Everything was going exactly as Tywin expected. He immediately marched on Tarbeck Hall with 3,000 men-at-arms and 500 knights. Lord Walderon was taken by surprise, and barely had time to raise an army of household knights to meet Tywin in the field. Most of this miserable army, including the Tarbeck heir himself, were butchered in battle. Lord Walderon and two of his surviving sons were captured and subsequently executed. Lady Ellen Rain anticipated a long, grueling siege. She hid inside Tarbeck Hall with her son, Theon the new Lord Tarbeck, and sent ravens to Castamere, asking her brothers for help. Roger and Reynard hastily gathered an army 2,000 strong, and marched straight for Tarbeck Hall. Sir Kevin Lannister arrived at the castle under a peace banner and demanded Lady Ellen surrender, but she merely laughed at him, saying, You are not the only lions in the west, sir. My brothers are coming, and their claws are just as long and sharp as yours. But Sir Tywin was not expecting a long siege at all. He ordered siege engines to fire boulders at the old keep, which could not withstand the force. Tarbeck Hall collapsed, crushing Lady Ellen and her son. The gates were thrown open, and the remains of the castle were put to the torch. Ellen's daughters were allegedly forced to join the Silent Sisters, while her grandson, known to the histories as the last Lord Tarbeck, went missing. Some claim the boy was smuggled to Essos and grew up to become a famous bard although more likely he was thrown down a well by Sir Amory Lorch. But the revolt was not over. The Rain army caught the Lannister host by surprise, but the Red Lions were fewer in number. The tide of the battle swiftly turned, and when half of Lord Roger's army lay dead, he ordered a swift retreat. To add insult to injury, the Lord of Castamere was wounded by a crossbow bolt while fleeing. With his older brother growing feverish from the wound, the cunning Sir Reynard took command of the remaining Rain forces. He ordered the inhabitants of Castamere to retreat deep into the mines and prepare for a siege. When Tywin's host arrived, bolstered by new forces, Sir Reynard sent terms to the young lion. He knew the Lannister army could not possibly fight their way into the mines, and so he offered loyal vassalage, in return for Tywin's brothers serving within Castamere as hostages. Tywin did not accept, but neither did he attack the mines. In an act of ruthless cunning, Tywin ordered every entrance to be blocked with stone, earth, and soil. His men dammed a stream and diverted it into the nearest mine entrance. All he had to do was wait. Silence rose into panicked shouts, which grew into faint screams, which eventually faded back into silence. The 300 men, women, and children were never seen again. Before leaving, Tywin ordered Castamere to be raised. The Westerlands grew to fear the Golden Lion once again, and order was restored. Tywin officially became Lord Paramount six years later when Tytoed had a heart attack, but in truth, he had ruled the Westerlands ever since the Rain Tarbeck Revolt. The bloody events of 261 were immortalised in song, a song which acts as both Lannister propaganda and a threat to disobedient vassals, the Reigns of Castamere. But now the Reigns weep o'er his hall, with no one there to hear. Yes, now the Reigns weep o'er his halls, and not a soul to hear. Speaking of ruined castles, you can find out about the animated history of Harrenhal in this video.
Special thanks to my patron Alex. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and check out my Patreon for cool content and Discord access. And feel free to give suggestions for future videos in the comments. Thanks for watching.